Video one of the integration extra practice, we will discuss the first seven integrals. Okay, number one. We have a definite integral here, and so we will need to use fundamental theorem of calculus. Maybe the only side work I will do is let's write the second term as t plus two to the minus two power. Now, in order to find an antiderivative here, I really think of this as basic rules. So the first term we have t cubed, and the second term um, technically is substitution, but my inside function has derivative one, and so I will just add a power, t plus two to the minus one, and then divide by the higher power. Okay, as I mentioned, this is definite, and so we evaluate between zero and two. Okay, well, evaluate at the upper limit of integration. We have eight. Okay, this term you see is really a plus, and then we would have one over four. Subtract off, evaluate at the lower limit of integration. We would have zero, and then we would have plus one over two. Altogether, you notice we have eight minus one over four, which as a fraction, this would be 31 divided by four. Here is my final answer. Number two. We want to integrate the tangent of theta d theta. Well, this is not a function where I expect you to have an antiderivative memorized. We can calculate by writing tangent as sine over cosine, and then we will use substitution. Okay, let's let u be the cosine of theta. This is in our denominator. Moreover, we have a multiple of the derivative of the cosine in our integrand. Okay, so du, we take the derivative, minus sine theta d theta. Handed to me in my integral is sine theta d theta. And you notice this is minus one du. This is my integration box. Now, convert to an integral of u. We have one over u times minus one du. Integrate. We get negative ln absolute value of u plus c. And finally, we go back to theta. My final answer is minus ln absolute value cosine theta plus c. Number three, we have another definite integral. Now, what do we observe? We have a product, x times cosine x over two. So we're going to be using integration by parts here. Let me remind you of this acronym, LIATE. This stands for log, inverse trig, algebraic, trig, and then exponential. And we go in this order for selecting the u. So I have no log, I have no inverse trig, but I do have algebraic here. All right, so let's let u be the x. And then dv is everything else, including the dx. So we have cosine x over two dx. All right, so we differentiate u, du, this is dx. Here we integrate. So let me remind you, if we integrated cosine ax dx, here a is a constant. You can write out the steps of substitution if you don't remember this, but what happens is we get one over a, and then you integrate the cosine, which is positive sine ax plus c. Now the same thing holds as we will use on the next integral. If you have e to the ax, we would get a one over a, come out in front, 
Or if you had sine AX, it's this part. We have this one over A. So let's use that here. In this example, our A is a half. So when we integrate cosine X over two, we get two sine x over 2. Very nice. Now, uv minus the integral of v du. And it's definite. Let's write it down. So we have this will equal uv 2x sine x over 2. Okay, evaluate it between 0 and pi minus the integral of v du, and it's definite between zero and pi. This first part, I can go ahead and evaluate. I'll do this in a few steps. We have two pi sine pi over two. And then you notice when you subtract off at zero, we have two times zero, well, times something. So this is zero. Now, let's integrate this. When we integrate the sine, Okay, well first let's write down the two. When we integrate the sine, we get negative cosine. Now remember, we have this one half x on the inside. So we get a one over one half. And then times negative cosine x over two. And we evaluate between zero and pi. You'll notice I have two minus signs here, which will well, multiply to be a plus. Okay, we can make this look nicer. Note that the sine of pi over two is one. And so this first term is just two pi. Then let's evaluate at the upper limit of pi. We have plus four cosine pi over two. Okay, subtract off, evaluate at the lower limit of zero. This would be okay, four cosine zero. We're almost finished here. Cosine pi over two is zero. Cosine zero is one. Here is my final answer, two pi minus four. When you're working with trig, we would not want to leave a final answer with a cosine pi over two or a cosine of zero. We must evaluate trig functions. This was a fun one. Okay, number four. This is a pretty short question. You notice I don't have a lot of space here. Let's see. I'm going to use some properties of exponents. The first term I can write as e to the four times e to the p. The second term, we can write as e to the p plus p plus p, which is also known as e to the 3p and dp. All right, so now we have a constant. e to the 4 is a constant times e to the p. So write down the constant, and then we integrate e to the p with respect to p, which is e to the p. Next one, here you see, I mentioned this was coming in this integral. We have e to the 3p. When we integrate e to the 3p with respect to p, we get a one over three. E to the 3p. And finally, this is an indefinite integral, and so we have the plus c. This was pretty short. The next one is pretty short too, um, I consider this basic rules. It follows from something we discussed when we were learning integration by substitution. Maybe I will just write this here. Recall, this is an important formula. If we integrate one over a squared plus x squared dx, we get one over a, 10 inverse, of x over a plus c. So really that's what I need to use here. My a is two. So the answer here, we have five times one over two, tan inverse of x over two plus c. 
Number six, I'd like to work this two ways. It is great practice integrating an absolute value function, which we will do more of in chapter three when we get to distance traveled. But um, the first way is really using geometry. So I can graph this. We're looking on zero to two. Um, and the function is, well, let me just graph x minus one on zero to two, which looks something like this. So here would be two, one, and here's minus one and one. Okay, this is y equals x minus one. Okay. So if we integrate the absolute value of this, that would be the total area here, right? Really, this is just the area of two triangles added together. So we have this triangle, which has base one, height one. The area here is a half times one times one. Okay, that would be here. Now there's some symmetry. In fact, both of these triangles have area one half. And so this integral, just thinking about area is one half plus one half, which is one. Quite straightforward because we were dealing with triangles. But let's imagine we were integrating the absolute value of some function, which didn't amount to calculating areas of triangles. So I'm going to do this uh, a way that works in general as well. Now, how would we do this? Well, on the integral from one to two, this function is x minus one. And on the integral from zero to one, this function is, well, it's one minus x. And so we would just add those two definite integrals. Let's do that here. We have zero to one where x minus one is negative and the absolute value of x minus one is one minus x. And then we add integral one to two where x minus one is positive and the absolute value of x minus one is x minus one. Okay, so here we have x minus x squared over two. We evaluate between zero and one. Okay, we add, we have x squared over two minus x between one and two. The first one, you notice we get one minus a half. Okay, when we evaluate at zero, of course we get zero. The second term, we get two minus two, and then we subtract off one half minus one. Okay, this is zero, this is a half, and then we really add a half here. So we have a half plus a half, which is one. Okay, ta-da, we had the same answer. Of course we should. Um, in this example, as I mentioned, I think thinking about areas of triangles was much simpler but this approach would work um, integrating the absolute value of really any continuous function. Okay, number seven, which is the last one in this video one, we have polynomial divided by polynomial. You'll notice the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator. So we will need to long divide here. We will do this in black. Okay, so we put S plus seven, we have s cubed plus seven s squared plus s plus 10. All right, well, we have s and s cubed. We need s squared. That would, when we multiply s by s squared, we get this one, s cubed. So now we subtract off, we multiply this s squared by this polynomial, we have s cubed plus seven s squared. s cubed plus seven s squared. We're left with s plus 10. 
Okay, we continue. We have S, we have S. We need a plus one here. Now let's subtract off. We take this plus one, multiply by this polynomial, which is S plus seven. We are left with three. Now, perfect. We have this degree is zero. It's less than the degree here, so we are finished. This is our remainder. Now, I'm ready to actually go back and do the integration. My long division tells me that this integrand is s squared plus one plus three divided by s plus seven. Okay, we have s cubed over three plus s plus three ln absolute value s plus seven. Um, well, let me move this back so that I have room for plus C. This is my final answer. The integration wasn't too bad once we long divide it. Well, thank you so much, everyone. This concludes the first seven integrals on our integration extra practice.